please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Uh, well, markets in a fine spot uh, and trending upward. Uh, let's shift to other larger term issues uh, that India Inc. should worry about. The power sector is in focus as statements from the power minister indicate that electricity tariffs across India could rise by between 62 and 93 pies per kilowatt hour uh, during the first year of upgrading coal-fired power plants to make them desulfurized, that is less polluting. Ajay Kumar Bhalla, the power secretary, has joined us. Good morning, Mr. Bhalla. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sir, if you can take us through what is the uh, you know, game plan. We know that in a year you want all the coal-fired or the thermal power plants to be desulfurized or what you call FGD. Uh, who bears the bill? See, I'll tell you, there are four components uh, on which uh, this tariff was estimated and uh, mentioned in a reply in Parliament. Mm. One is the desulfurization, the FGD. Mm. Other is the suspended particulate matter to be brought under control. Mm. Third is the nitrogen oxide emission. And the fourth is a closed water cycle for saving water. Mm. If we look at the retrofitting of all the four activities, the mm. tariff impact has been estimated to be 62 to 93 paisa okay. per unit. Okay as per our central electricity authorities estimates. Okay. Now, all the plants do not require this, mm. and all the plants will be implementing desulfurization and nitrogen emission compliance over a period of time. Mm. Uh, the pl plan which we had submitted to Ministry of Envi Environment and Forest has been accepted, and now Central Pollution Control Board is issuing notices to these plants mm. to comply with these emission norms mm. as per the phasing plan we have submitted. Okay. I would like to add here that the phasing plan was prepared, you know, it's unit-wise. The unit needs to be shut down to add a desulfurization oh. unit for a few months. Oh, I see. So we had to put it, put it in a phased manner. Mm. So this is a five-year time frame mm. where more than 400 units will be acquiring this. Mm. So the tariff impact of this nature, one thing for each plant, it will not be there. Okay. And secondly, it's over a period of time. Okay, I get your point, sir. So this uh, 90, 62 to 93 pies is an expense that will be incurred by the entire industry over five years. Yeah, I mean, this is the tariff impact. The capex uh, is uh, shown to be about 88 lakhs uh, mm. to 1.28 crores per megawatt mm. uh, as per the Central Lake City Authority estimates for all the four activities. And as I said earlier, all the plants will not need all the activities. Okay. okay. So, uh, can you give us an so estimate Investment of... will be one side and oh. the impact on tariff we have estimated. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so the, what would the cost of the total overhaul be with respect to both investment and the tariff hike? And will there be any support from the government to these companies for these upgradation costs? No, see about 40 lakhs is an estimate for a desulfurization unit. Mm. Okay. And uh, about, uh, depending on the technology, 10 to 40 lakhs uh, uh, for uh, per megawatt I'm talking, mm. for nitrogen emissions. Mm. Now, impact will be 30 paisa for desulfurization and about 9 to 30 paisa for uh, nitrogen emissions. Okay. So, I mean, it will vary. Uh, you know, these are the Central Electricity Authority estimates mm. depending on our assessment of technology. When the tenders are called by individual units, mm. they will get the competitive bids. Mm. And when such a, a large scale um, technology will come in, it will definitely bring down the prices. Okay. So uh, impact on tariff will actually be known when the bidding takes place. So, okay. As of now, yes, I mean, the investment will have to be made by the respective plants. So then two questions. Mm. Who are the people who provide the services? Because I expect immediately they are the guys who are going to be advantaged. Uh, if you can tell us what what are the nature of the companies there there are uh, there would be players in the market uh, and this technology can be developed also there are already some technologies available for re reducing sulfur and nitrogen mm. uh, nit uh, like uh, ntpc has already for two of its plants in ncr region have gone for the tenders mm. okay. and bids have come from uh, four to five players so there are different players already available in the market. Okay. So and for what is yeah. the uh, this uh, tariff? And as I say, it's a period of five years over which this plan will be implemented. Mm. More people will come in. Okay. So now, when uh, say NTPC or say a Tata Power or uh, uh, a Reliance Infra 
has to increase its price by 60 pies. They will be allowed to pass it on, uh, you know, because most of them are into PPAs. So there is an agreement to supply power at a certain price. Will this be a pass through? Yeah. Yes. There are two types of things. One is the cost plus model where mostly central com uh, government plants and uh, state generating utilities supply power on a tariff which is calculated by the regulator, mm. what we call as the uh, cost plus model. Mm. There any additional cost incurred will be passed through. For the bid tariff, it will be treated as a change in law and the regulator will consider the co uh, investments made and decide accordingly that how much of it will be passed through. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, looking at the recovery period of this investment. Um, the okay. capex made over a period of time it will be recovered, mm -hmm. so accordingly it will be decided by the regulator. These are just estimates, 62 paisa again uh, when you say, it's a misnomer, it's a four activities. Many plants have the closed cycle water already, okay. so that investment won't be there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and SPM uh, as a particulate matter also is very, very well within plants in majority of the plants. Okay, I just want a clarification, Mr. Bhalla. You said uh, two plants of NTPC, so uh, just two of their plants will go in for upgradation. And will it be only upgradation or will some of these plants be scrapped as well? No, see, the way in our plan, uh, out of 196 gigawatt coal-based capacity, mm -hmm. we have submitted that uh, about 10,000 uh, megawatts will be phased out as a retirement. This is now all over the country, not NTPC. Mm -hmm. And uh, remaining, some plants are already compliant. So it is about 170 gigawatt of plants which needs this uh, desulfurization. Okay. And then some of those will need nitrogen emission control also. Okay. Now, uh, in the NCR region, we have already initiated steps for uh, bringing desulfurization. So, with NTPC has already gone for bids. Okay. Otherwise, in the phased plan up to December 22, this needs to be implemented in all the coal-based plants. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. By by what deadline did you say? December 22. 22. December 22, okay. starting from 2018 itself. Sure. So it's a five years time frame, mm. but it's a spread over different units of each plant mm. so that uh, power supply is not affected. Okay. Sir, yes. can I uh, uh, you know, digress from this issue for a bit? Uh, I know we invited you primarily for uh, uh, this uh, desulfurization exercise, but uh, you know, separately we had some articles uh, uh, in newspapers saying that uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure is not ready and therefore the promised procuring of electric vehicles has not happened. Uh, many of the government departments, uh, notably EESL, have not procured the promised vehicles, although they have been manufactured by the companies, uh, say Tata Motors, m and because the charging infrastructure is not available. Can you update us on uh, you know, when the charging infrastructure will be ready and when EESL will make the promised procurement? The ESL has already uh, brought the bids for uh, charging infrastructure also. Mm. The number was reduced because of certain technical uh, issues. Oh, and those chargers are getting installed. Uh, mm. um, about 150 or some chargers he has already ordered. Mm. The remaining charges moment there is a certification issue was there. That is resolved the other charges will also be coming through. ESL stands for this uh, commitment of 10,000 vehicles to be inducted into government systems. That is very much okay. on. It's, mm. uh, it's not that it has been shelved or something. No, uh, sir, but uh, what kind of a timeline are we looking at? Because, you know, earlier the vehicles were supposed to be delivered by 30th November. Then that was subsequently postponed to 30th December. Now, in terms of a timeline, what are we looking at? No, 10,000 vehicles were not supposed to be delivered in November or December. Mm -hmm. 10,000 vehicles were supposed to be delivered over a period of time. Only 500 vehicles were supposed to be delivered. Mm -hmm. Some of these vehicles have already been delivered and given to the agencies or offices who are proposing to use it. And uh, as I said, 150 chargers in, uh, have already been uh, procured and installed also mm -hmm. in various places. So it is being, uh, uh, it's taking place in a phased manner. We have uh, ESL has already demands from many government offices for uh, giving them these vehicles. Okay, so we spoke at length about the supply side of uh, 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 electric power. Uh, now for the demand side, uh, can, do you see any green shoots in terms of fresh PPAs? Uh, we haven't heard about uh, 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 fresh PPAs. The PLF of uh, power plants, especially the new ones, is still pretty pathetic. Uh, can you uh, give us some idea of the demand scenario? 
see that uh, we, I mean, uh, power sector has grown by about 5% in the yes. current uh, fiscal as of now, as of November. Mm. Uh, there is a decline shown in the November. November is generally a lean month uh, mm. in the winter time. Yeah, so uh, growth is less not than 1%, very high. Sir. I mean, as we look at the peak demand and all. So. Uh, yeah, that is a growth part, but overall it's 5% up to end of November. Mm. Uh, secondly, I mean, uh, what we are looking at uh, in a national electricity plan mm. is a go growth of more than 6% mm. uh, as projected by Central Electricity Authority. Okay. So that uh, definitely is there, but, but presently we have more capacity available and uh, our peak requirement is let's say 165 gigawatts mm. the installed capacity is 330 mm. of course the so, uh, renewables and hydro are not available 85% uh, of the time mm. i mean 85% plf is not there in those capacities mm. but uh, definitely we are looking at a better scenario you have seen the core sector growth yes it is picking up so we expect uh, electricity demand to go up uh, in the near future mm. Uh, you know, the other problem that the renewable guys were complaining is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, contracts and PPAs entered into earlier when the uh, capital cost was high uh, are now being resented and resisted by several state discoms. Uh, has the Central Power Ministry addressed this? Uh, uh, clearly yes. now power, renewable power tariffs are falling, at least the new bids are coming at two and a half rupees. But that is not the capital cost of the older plants. Have you all addressed this problem that the discoms have uh, thrown in the way of renewable yes. power, power companies? Ministry. My so our sister ministry, Ministry of MNRE, who have already issued advisory and as uh, our uh, prevailing upon the state governments not to cancel the PPAs or review the PPAs. Uh, in some cases, regulators are also, matters are pending for approval of regulators and all, which uh, my colleague from MNRE has al always been pursuing. Okay. That is, uh, I mean, not in our domain. Okay. But recently, the guidelines for both solar and wind procurement have been notified. Okay. Where definitely investors will def uh, now will be in a clearer uh, distinct that what is change in law, what is passed through, mm. uh, if there is any changes in the law subsequently coming up. So that, that definitely will give a fillip to the investment in uh, renewables. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Bhalla, for joining us uh, with all those details uh, uh, and uh, for clarifying the way in which uh, the desulfurization timetable. Let's talk about some more corporates now. United Breweries, the stock is on our radar because uh, the company has been reporting very strong volume growth. In fact, the recent volume growth was the highest in the last seven quarters. Shekhar Ramamurthy, the MD of United Breweries, joins us now. Uh, Shekhar, hi. Good morning. Uh, happy New Year to you and thank you for joining <coughs> us. In fact, uh, your products are, you know, a permanent fix of all the New Year celebrations, so it is indeed a very happy New Year that you guys provide to all uh, all the people who celebrate. But I wanted to start off by asking you what the um, the view is for the new fiscal, the fiscal that's coming up. Um, is volume growth uh, strong enough, and will it continue to be in double digits like you saw in the previous quarter? Uh, firstly, good morning and happy New Year to all of you. Uh, you know, volume growth uh, is something that I've been talking about for the last one year. And we have said that we clearly anticipate volume growth of mid-single digit for the industry, 6 7% for the industry. And we have said we will uh, uh, grow ahead of that. Now, what we foresee for uh, the next 12 to 15 months is a similar trend because growth is not even across the country. You know, there are parts of the country, for example, Telangana and Andhra, are showing very strong double-digit growth. But at the same time, there are uh, Bengal and Maharashtra have not shown such growth. Mm. So therefore, what we feel is that, uh, you know, the next 12 months, 15 months, we hopefully will be uh, putting behind us all the headwinds which we had over the last uh, year, year and a half. You know, first impact for demonetization, then the highway ban, which was unique to our industry, the effects of which were felt well into 2017. So we hope and we feel that 2018-19 uh, fiscal will be positive. We don't anticipate any significant headwinds. And I say that very cautiously mm -hmm. because you never know what can <laughs> come and hit us. As you know, yeah. you know, if you lived in Bombay last two months, we've not had beer in Bombay for the last two months because, you know, the excise duty <laughs> had gone up and they had not issued adequate clarifications. But that got resolved around Christmas and we are back in business in Maharashtra. Mm. So, you know, it's cautiously optimistic. 
that there will be no significant headwinds, there will be volume growth, and uh, as you said, we will endeavor to spread cheer across the country. Okay, that's, that caution is the very opposite of what the brew should actually <laughs> engender. Uh, but uh, Shekhar, just to drive that point further, uh, you know, uh, therefore, you, last quarter you stunned us with your 11% uh, volume growth. Yeah. Would you say that was just making yeah. up for the previous two quarters which had been disrupted because of these external uh, events? We should not make 11% uh, 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 a habit in terms of expectation? <laughs> well, I, I think 11% was a little high mm. because as I said uh, <laughs> last year, there were impact effects of various uh, disruptions in the country. And, uh, but we do, we do see uh, healthy growth uh, going forward. But however, as I said, last two months uh, in a very important state of Maharashtra, we actually did very little business mm. because from end October till end December, uh, we didn't have clarity on how the duty on beer would pan out. That uh, clarification came only end December. So quarter three will be a little muted, particularly because of the impact of Maharashtra. Okay. But we, you know, <coughs> you will actually see quarter four growth for not just us. I think you'll see across the country quarter four volume growth being high because quarter four last year, mm. people were feeling the impact of demonetization. Mm. And yeah. our industry felt the impact of the impending highway ban. Mm. You know, uh, Shekhar, apart from demonetization, the highway ban, etc., another thing that your company is facing is increased competition from newer players. So, Bira, for example, has expanded exponentially. In fact, they've got funding from yeah. private equity players as well. I'm sure you feel a bit of heat there. Um, what are you guys doing to combat that? Well, you know, the... I, I always maintain this that, uh, you know, there will always be competition and competition is good because uh, A, it, it, it keeps everybody sharp and of course uh, a comp a good competitors help grow the industry also. Mm -hmm. So Bira is a new competitor. Bira of course has got a lot of uh, funding from investors. Uh, they are expanding and at this point of time they are appealing to, uh, let's say, a niche audience in mm -hmm. urban India who are uh, looking forward to a premium mild beer. Mm. So in that segment, of course, they've made an impact. Okay. But if you look at our portfolio, uh, even our super premium brands like Ultra and Heineken and Max are growing very strong double digits. Okay. So okay. the top end of the market, there is a lot of growth. Mm. There is room for competition. Okay. And, uh, you know, as a market leader, we have to respect the fact that okay. there will always be competition. Okay. Well, like USL, will you also look to franchise any of your uh, brands uh, or in, uh, would you look to increase the prices of any? You know, pricing is a key issue in our industry. And I'll take that point first, because as you know, in about 60% of the country, we sell to state corporations. Mm. And state corporations are often reluctant to give us price increases mm. for a variety of reasons, you know, okay. because they want to appropriate greater share of the value to the government uh, revenue. So wherever price increases are possible by us, by ourselves, we always do that. And we constantly talking to various state governments to allow us a reasonable price increase so that we're able to cover our costs. And so that, that's how our uh, pricing strategy will be. We'll always look to uh, getting more value for our brands. Okay. In terms of franchise, you know, it's not something I can make a comment of yes and no. Mm. There are uh, certain circumstances under which it may be uh, uh, interesting to look at an option like that. But at this point of time, uh, that, that's not something we are focusing on. Right. Okay, Shekhar, uh, have a great year and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for joining us. That's United Breweries, but we've run out of time completely.